We all like to imagine that our favorite actors and actresses are great people in real life. But if their co-stars are to be believed, some of Hollywood's finest actors can be downright jerks. For a while, Val Kilmer's reputation tended to show up in a room way before he did. Starting all the way back in 1995 with Batman Forever, Kilmer has been known for his attitude behind the scenes. After filming for Batman Forever Wrapped, director Joel Schumacher said in an interview that Val Kilmer was childish and impossible. But the island of Dr. Moreau was allegedly where Val Kilmer really hit his stride, according to those who worked with him. After making that film, the director John Frankenheimer said, I will never climb Mount Everest, and I will never work with Val Kilmer again. From becoming Disney's wonderkind and even Stevens, to snagging minor roles in major blockbusters like Constantine and iRobot, Shia LaBeouf seemed set for success even before he landed the starring role in Transformers in 2007. That movie and its sequels kicked his career into the stratosphere. And then nobody's really sure what happened. It is because they think sardines will be thrown into the sea. Thank you very much. <laughs> He started taking more avant-garde roles. He staged strange publicity stunts, like wearing a paper bag that said, I am not famous anymore, and running around an art gallery 144 times. Even before that, his penchant for over-the-top method acting rubbed people the wrong way. He got into a fistfight with Brad Pitt on the set of 2014's war epic Fury. Although, to be fair, the director allegedly told them to get into fights as a bonding experience. While filming 2012's Lawless, Shia LaBeouf tried to get into his character, who runs illegal moonshine during Prohibition, by guzzling bottles of actual moonshine. And he didn't stop there. He carved his name into co-star Mia Vasikowska's dressing room door and followed Tom Hardy around the set, fawning like his younger brother. From an acting standpoint, Shia LaBeouf's craziness seems to be working. Both of those roles brought him praise from critics. But it can't make working with the guy any easier. There's no doubting that Alec Baldwin is an outspoken man. Whether he's fighting Pavarazzi or shouting slurs, his private life is usually shoved into the limelight on a weekly basis. And then he apologizes, and we're all okay with that, because, well, he's Alec Baldwin. As a number of his co-stars have said, that's just who he is. Does being that way make him a pleasure to work with? Not always. Baldwin was allegedly part of the reason Shia LaBeouf left the Broadway show Orphans in 2013, as the two actors had reportedly clashed at rehearsals. On 30 Rock, his co-star Cheyenne Jackson had one thing to say about Baldwin. What I learned from him was really good comedic timing, and don't get in his light. Love him, hate him, or just sort of put up with him, Steven Seagal was born to raise hell. Somewhere between marked for death and out for justice, he must have made an executive decision to go from churning out low-budget action films in the 90s to churning out low-budget action films all the way through the next two decades. The truth is, Steven Seagal has been hard to kill for a long time now, which is surprising because he doesn't have a reputation for being a good man. Countless allegations of rape, sexual assault, and sex trafficking have been leveled against him over the years. That includes one by Playboy model and actress Jenny McCarthy who said in an interview that Seagal told her to take off her dress during a private audition for Under Siege 2, despite the absence of nudity in the film. Then there was the incident in which John Leguizamo claims that Seagal elbowed him up against the wall on the set of 1996's Executive Decision, all because Leguizamo laughed at something Seagal had said, thinking it was a joke. And he aketoed me against the brick wall, pow, knocked all the air, air out of me. I was like, why? It's almost cliché now that comedians often have darker sides, and Mike Myers isn't immune to the pressures of being a full-time funny man. Between Wayne's World, Austin Powers, and The Love Guru, Myers' whole brand is over-the-top, outrageously colorful characters, most of whom he's meticulously crafted himself. He's been called a perfectionist on his good days, and on his worst, he's been dubbed emotionally needy and difficult. That last quote comes from none other than Penelope Spheres, who directed Mike Myers in 1992's Wayne's World. Spheres also told the story of how Mike Myers stormed off the set once because the caterers didn't provide margarine for his bagel. With something of a reputation as the meanest man in show business, Chevy Chase's notoriety has followed him all the way from his rock star beginnings on Saturday Night Live in the 70s up to a recurring gig on NBC's hit show Community. Highlights, or lowlights as it were, include getting into a fistfight with Bill Murray and suggesting that SNL co-star Terry Sweeney, who was openly gay, do a weekly segment where he would get weighed to see if he had contracted AIDS yet. 
It certainly seems like Chevy Chase has a penchant for rubbing people the wrong way. He even came clean about it in 2012 when he said, Nobody prepares you for what happens when you get famous, and I didn't handle it well. That may be the understatement of the decade, but really it doesn't matter because he's Chevy Chase and you're not. Few people have become the target of tabloid fodder as completely as Katherine Heigl. In 2008, she publicly bashed the Judd Apatow comedy Knocked Up as sexist, despite, or perhaps because of, her starring role in the film. She later went on The Howard Stern Show to clarify her comments, saying, I liked the movie a lot, I just didn't like me. She used the same interview to apologize for complaining about not getting enough dramatic material on Grey's Anatomy. She's also been accused of being a prima donna on set, with an unnamed source who allegedly worked with her on 2010's Life As We Know It, claiming that Heigl caused problems during the entire production. On the flip side, Life As We Know It's director Greg Berlanti had nothing but praise for the actress and said he'd definitely work with her again. The set of Grey's Anatomy must be the most chaotic, stressful place for an actor to work, because there's apparently no end to the drama between cast members. Much like Katherine Heigl, it turns out Patrick Dempsey has his own bone to pick with the cast of the critically acclaimed medical drama. Dempsey, who played Dr. Derek Shepard, was apparently suspended once for acting like a diva and was killed off the show not long after that. The reports, which originated at Celebrity Gossip Mag Page Six, also said that Dempsey had clashed with the show's creator and executive producer, Shonda Rhimes. Dempsey later denied that there was anything but goodwill between him and the cast and crew of Grey's Anatomy. So in the end, it's hard to say exactly what went on behind the scenes at Grey Sloan Memorial Hospital. You may remember the time Kevin Smith described Bruce Willis as soul-crushing to work with during an interview about 2010's Cop Out, which Smith directed. Smith went on to say that Bruce Willis was pretty much his hero until he actually worked with the guy. To be fair, Kevin Smith and Bruce Willis seemed to be complete opposites in Hollywood, with Smith famous for offbeat comedies like Chasing Amy and Willis for gritty action films. So maybe it was just a one-off disagreement, but then again, maybe not. Director Antoine Fuqua also called Bruce Willis a major pain in the ass to work with, and Sylvester Stallone similarly seemed to have issues with Bruce Willis during the Expendables series, calling him greedy and lazy. You certainly know Mandy Patinkin's work, even if you don't know his name, probably from his unforgettable role as Inigo Montoya in 1987's The Princess Bride. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. More recently, you may have seen him in CBS's Criminal Minds and the Golden Globe-winning Showtime series Homeland. With such success in film and television, you probably have Patinkin pegged as a pretty nice guy, if perhaps a little intense. But by his own admission, Patinkin can be extremely difficult to work with. Before nearly destroying his television career in 2007 by suddenly walking away from Criminal Minds and never coming back, Patinkin was already behaving like a stuck-up starlet. Talking about the hospital drama Chicago Hope, Patinkin revealed in a 2013 interview, I never let directors talk to me because I was so spoiled. I was saying, don't talk to me, I don't want your opinion. I behaved abominably. Hopefully, he's turned it around since then. From 2004 to 2012, Desperate Housewives was one of the hottest shows on ABC's primetime lineup. But behind the scenes, trouble was brewing almost from day one. Terry Hatcher apparently took the brunt of the criticism from her castmates, who felt she acted like a diva off-camera. Hatcher's co-star Nicolette Sheridan went so far as to call Hatcher the meanest woman in the world, according to Mark Cherry, the show's creator. Now that the show is off the air, we'll probably never know the true extent of the problems the rest of the cast had with Terry Hatcher. After the final episode of Desperate Housewives, Hatcher reportedly stated, I will never disclose the true and complicated journey of us all. It's probably just as well. Some questions are best left unanswered. There's no denying that Jarrett Leto has lived a lot of lives. His career began in earnest with his role as teen dream Jordan Catalano on My So-Called Life in 1994. Plus, he fronts the pop-punk band 30 Seconds to Mars and won an Oscar for Dallas Buyers Club. But it was when he landed a role as a legendary villain in a comic book movie that he earned a reputation as an extremely intense, if dedicated, actor. Leto took his role as an especially nihilistic version of the Joker in Suicide Squad so seriously that in the name of getting into character, he reportedly played sick jokes on the film's other actors and sent them disgusting gifts. Co-star Viola Davis told Vanity Fair, He had a tech man who would come into the rehearsal room, and the henchman came in with a dead pig and plopped it on the table, and then he walked out. And that was our introduction into Jared Leto. 
He also sent along previously used prophylactics and adult toys to cast members because, as he told E! News, the Joker is somebody who doesn't really respect things like personal space or boundaries. Singer and actress Leah Michelle is well aware of the gossip that she's a diva. Despite the word's negative connotation as someone difficult to work with in modern Hollywood, Michelle told Allure in 2011, I came from the theater world where the word diva was awesome. Awesome or not, one example of Leah Michelle's diva behavior occurred on the set of Glee when technical problems delayed shooting and she reportedly snapped her fingers and shouted, Let's go, I have plans. She also apparently developed a nasty feud with her Glee co-star Naya Rivera. In her 2016 memoir, Sorry Not Sorry, Rivera says that they were once friends, but that their relationship buckled under the weight of her evolution from supporting character to one with bigger plot lines and more screen time. Rivera wrote that Michelle was very sensitive to any criticism or notes about her work and revealed, she blamed me for anything and everything that went wrong on set.